What's going on guys, Shane here. Fighting next weekend. I'm gonna give you details on how you can watch at the end of the video. But until then, let's talk about bare knuckle boxing strategies from the 17, 1800s and connect it to modern day fighting and MMA. So last year I did a video on the fighting Irish stance, talking about why guys would stand like this and strategies that they used. Then I got a video reply from Oz of English Martial Arts. Great video, very well spoken, intelligent guy, and he told me that a lot of my research was incorrect and I was teaching the wrong thing. So that caused me to do more research. He also supplied an article from Jack Slack. I'm a big fan of his. Very good article comparing uh, Nick Diaz and Daniel Mendoza. Daniel Mendoza was a 1700s bare knuckle prize fighter. Very interesting article showing the similarities in styles and strategies. Links in the description below. I think you guys are really going to enjoy that one. So I've been experimenting for about 15, 16 months now going bare knuckle in the heavy bag. And what I have found is how different it is than going on the heavy bag with gloves, right? It really decides the trajectory of your punch, how hard you're going, what part of the hand you're making contact with. And I think it's really benefited me with glove fighting as well. And think about it, the history of fighting goes something like this. In the 1700s, there were no rules in prize fighting. It was about who would win. There was biting, takedowns, elbows, grappling. And then progressively, more and more rules were added. Eventually, the Queensberry rules was gloves. Gloves were incorporated. And the reason why gloves were made is to protect the hands, right? It's not to prolong a fight or to um, not do damage to your opponent. It's to protect your own hands because our hands are made for grasping, holding, writing, sewing, intricate things not made for smashing against one of the hardest parts of the body, the skull, which protects the brain. Okay, so that really did decide the way that fighters held their hands, the way that they threw punches, and it's in writing that most of these fighters favored straight punches. And think about it, there's a lot of times that we see um, Muhammad Ali throw punches in fights where he would, his hand would be open by the time he would make contact, especially in the jabs, right? You can get away with that in the jab. I can go hard on the heavy bat, open hand, and be fine and not do any damage to my hand. But if we're talking about throwing a lead hook or an overhand right, I can't do that with an open hand. I'm gonna break my fingers, I'm gonna break something in my hand or tweak my wrist, all right? So they did favor the straight punches for that reason because these were their weapons. And if they broke one or broke both, they got nothing at that point. Okay, so you really do, it really did dictate the, the style and the way that they, they fought. So Nick Diaz and Daniel Mendoza, similar styles, but also very different. So the reason why they had hands in and uh, threw punches like this, they would actually, some people would recommend throwing upside down jabs or call it a long uppercut, whatever you want, is because you would guarantee make contact with the knuckles, right? There's no way that I could overextend and hit with the incorrect part or tweak my wrist. So it's all about wrist alignment and hitting with the correct part of my hand. How often is that taught? Never. Although, who's this look like? Conor McGregor uses that long uppercut all the time, successfully. All right, so little things like that. It's, it's very interesting stuff. Also, it brings your elbows in more, right? If I'm out here, flared in more of a Muay Thai stance, my body's open for grappling, for takedowns. But if I go here, it automatically brings my elbows in and protects from the underhooks. Again, so different styles for different things. MMA is all about balance. All about balance and styles, right? So um, another really interesting thing is seeing boxers, pure boxers, convert over into MMA. Heather Hardy is a great example. Heather Hardy just had her second Bellator MMA fight. Her first fight, she had a lot of trouble, but she won. And in the post-fight interview, she said, Boxing for MMA is way different than boxing for boxing. Here's a clip. You step in with a jab and your front leg is really exposed because all the weight is on it. For either someone to kick it or come and take it out. I mean, so your jabbing is different where as in boxing you can really connect to a jab. So yes, every time you throw a jab with your toes facing inward, pressure on that lead foot, you're open for a leg kick. You have to be wary of takedowns. But not only that, slipping, bobbing, and weaving puts you closer to your opponent's knee and foot. That's exactly what happened in her second fight. Muscle memory caused her to start defending like this, and she got caught with a shin right across the nose that took her out. Now, a lot of people credit Nick Diaz as having some of the best boxing in MMA, Nate as well. And I don't disagree. At first, I did. And I used to think, no, he looks nothing like Floyd. He looks nothing like Manny. Some of the best boxers out there, Oscar, right? He doesn't look like any of these guys. He doesn't have a Philly shell. He doesn't have a peekaboo stance. A Philly shell stance is not gonna work in MMA. A traditional real boxing Philly shell stance with your, like, where you're like this, 
you're asking for leg kicks, you're asking for takedowns, you're asking for kicks over top of the shoulder, that's not going to work. Depending on the rules depends on your style and how you fight. Daniel Mendoza and Nick Diaz had a very similar style where they put pressure on the lead foot. They would walk towards you with extended arms to stop and negate your punches from coming in. You use his right hand on your left to parry and push that hand down and come over top. Vice versa on the other side. And you see Nick and Nate do this a lot where they throw the punches from here. Their arms are half extended already and it's just... Right? Not a ton of power. You rarely see them wind up for big shots. And it's for that reason. So that they can get there direct with the shots. And also it's, it's better on the hands. There's actually a clip of BJ Penn throwing a shot at Nick. And Nick just headbutts his hand. He just tucks his chin. BJ Penn broke his hand on Nick. And KJ Noons also broke his hand on Nick's head. All right, so these things, I mean, the smaller the gloves, the less protection, the more damage you're going to do to your hands. Again, that's your weapon. You want to make sure that you're protecting them. Very interesting stuff. Letway is also a very interesting sport to study. It's pretty much bare knuckle Muay Thai with headbutts. Shout out to my guy, Dave Leduc, King Leduc on Instagram. Been studying a lot of his stuff as well. But it's interesting because Muay Thai fighters that try Letway aren't always necessarily successful because of the gloves. It changes your defense. It changes the strategy and the strikes that you throw. Another common question that I get, usually around the time that Manny Pacquiao was fighting, is why does he shadow box with open hands, right? Think about the way that Manny shadow boxes. It's very quick, but his hands are wide open. Why does he do that? It's because probably he's just warming up, trying to find his rhythm. He knows that by the time he makes contact, he needs to squeeze his hand. That's usually what I teach. It's what most people teach. But like I said earlier, with the jab, you can get away with that. If you're just touching point fighting, trying to just land shots, not really do damage, and you can get away with loose fists, right? Maybe not open fingers, but loose fists. And it isn't until you see that you're going to hit maybe the side of the head, the forehead, or you're trying to land a crushing blow that you actually squeeze, bone stack, load up, and really throw a big shot that you squeeze your fist. All right, so are you point fighting? Are you trying to add up points? Or are you trying to knock someone out? The difference between Floyd and Triple G Gennady Golovkin. And watch the way that they shadow box. You'll see a difference. Floyd does a little bit of both. He knows he's one of the most intelligent boxers, if not the most intelligent. He knows when to do it, when to squeeze his hand, when to keep it open. Same with Triple G. A lot of times he's shadow boxing with weights in his hands and you see the, the pinkies are flared out. Right? But what do you have to do when you hold weights? You have to squeeze. You have to have a fist. And his pinkies are out is because he likes landing with the index finger knuckle. Right? When he throws his hooks to the body, you can almost see the index finger popping through the glove into the liver, right? So he doesn't often land with the bottom knuckles. He usually lands with the, the first two, first three. And that's why he's always holding the weights because he's a, he's a knockout puncher. That's what, that's what he does. He goes for the power. So it's speed and agility with open hands, maybe a little bit more range, power, maybe a little bit more slowed down when you have closed fist. But yeah, absolutely. You can go open hand and then by the time you make contact, close your fist. Right, parries are, are mostly open hands. But just a couple things to keep in mind. I definitely recommend that you go bare knuckle on the heavy bag and just experiment with it. Be careful. Again, these are your money makers. You don't want to injure them. All right, guys. So I'm fighting next weekend, Saturday, November 11th at Systems Training Center in Hawthorne, California. I'll be fighting my good friend Marcus Koval in an exhibition kickboxing match to raise awareness for Liam's foundation. His son, at just 15 months old, was struck and killed by a drunk driver. So to raise awareness and money, we're putting on a show for everyone. If you can't make it, there's a link in the description below where you can donate because we're going to be streaming it on my Instagram, at Shane Faison. So definitely make sure you're following me on there. Come Saturday night, we'll put it on live for everyone. Also, if you can make it in person, I'm doing a seminar that same day. If you buy tickets to the seminar, you'll get free access to watch me fight live. I have a feeling it's going to sell out because everyone wants to see me fight. So again, links in the description below to buy tickets about 20 minutes south of LA. If you can make it, we're going to be covering boxing footwork drills, functional Taekwondo kicks, and Dutch style kickboxing combos. You guys are really going to enjoy it for all ages and levels. Just bring a pair of boxing gloves. All right, guys, until next time, I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.